So with the booster course pass wrapped up, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is finally done. With that being said, I'm going to be ranking all 48 DLC courses in the game. There are going to be 5 tiers to this list. The shit tier are tracks that I despise the most. The weak sauce tier are tracks that I think are either lame or just not good. The decent tier are tracks I think are okay but still lacking. The rad tier are tracks that I consider good or amazing. And finally, the goaded tier where these tracks are what I consider the best in my opinion. I'm telling you all right now, you're going to hate the placements of some of these tracks, but that's what makes it fun. So let's jump right into it. Athens Dash, more like Athens Trash. This track can sometimes get confusing. There's too much turning to do, and overall, it just doesn't appeal to me. Mew Mew Highway is a track that I felt highly disappointed in. The shortcuts were nice, but there were too many cars to dodge, and the bomb carts were hella annoying to deal with. I just refuse to acknowledge this track as anything good or okay. Why the hell would they bring this track back? There was nothing good or fun about Sunset Wilds. Like Athens Dash, this track has too much turning, but it's even worse here. And the giant shy guys aren't helping much, it's just not a good track. Koopa Cape Mole Koopa Cope is by far the worst DLC track I've ever played. Once again, there's just too much turning to do. If you screw up once during the waterfall section, you're going to ram into the rocks ahead. The underwater pipe section sucks too. I can't begin to tell you how much I didn't like the turning in there as well. Now you're probably noticing that all four of these tracks are from Wave 5. Let me break it down for you all. In my opinion, Wave 5 is easily the worst wave in the booster course pass. The other four tracks are good, but these four tracks really bring it down heavily. And some may say you haven't played the older Mario Kart games to understand the tracks, and I say that's an invalid argument. Even if I played these tracks from the perspective games, my answer would still be the same. And if I hate these tracks in this game, what makes you think I would go back and try them out in previous games? With that being said, let's move on to the weak sauce tier. Toad Circuit is just a bland track. Nothing interesting happens in it, but nothing bad either. Shroom Ridge isn't much of a good track. Again, too many cars and the road is just too skinny to dodge any of them. But the music is nice though. Mario Circuit 3 is so damn lame. No good obstacles, no interesting gimmicks, not even challenging parts or anything to change up the track. It's just lame. Riverside Park would have been decent, but not only is it mid, but the walking piranha plants are annoying as hell. I hate it when I'm just racing fine, only to see a damn walking piranha plant getting in my way. It's just not fun. DS Mario Circuit would have been a decent track as well, but the turning is so ass. It was better handled in Mario Kart DS. It's so disappointing that they could screw up the turning in this version. Piranha Plant Cope is not good either. Some of the turns aren't that good and there wasn't anything fun or spectacular in that track. And that's about it for the weak sauce. Now for the decent here. Choco Mountain is just there. I have nothing any I don't have anything bad to say about the track. It's there, nothing special. Tokyo Bland is also nothing special. Nothing screams Japanese about the track. Not even the music itself, but it's a track I don't mind playing. Newark Minute is fine. Visually it's amazing looking. The music is also superb to listen to, and the track itself is okay. I do like the shortcuts for each lap. I don't mind Snowland that much, but the penguins can be annoying and I don't like the moving item boxes at all. Boo Lake is just a short, uninteresting yet okay track. One of the sharp turns is a bit much, but other than that, it's alright. Rock Rock Mountain, I got nothing much to say about it, though I do like the fact that you can do tricks above the pipes in the air after passing the finish line for laps 2 and 3. The music in Maple Tree Ray is fine, and I love that they finally implemented the trick ramps in this game. Other than that, it's okay. Bangkok Rush is just there. I didn't like it at first, but now I think it's an okay track. Nothing much interesting to say about it. Yoshi's Island is easily the worst of the three, three new tracks, yes I say three. But it's still decent. The shy guys on the stilts can be annoying when you're trying to avoid them. And trying to activate the second path at the end of each lap can be tricky. But it's still not a bad track. I didn't like the turning in DK Mountain, but everything else is fine. Even the music is good too. And now, we are on to the rat tier. These are the tracks that I think are very good and fun to play with. 
I can see why people like Coconut Mall so much. It's really fun, from doing tricks at the end of the escalators to the shortcuts and the moving Shy Guys. This track is awesome. Ninja Hideaway, this one definitely screams Japanese. This is much better than Tokyo Bland. The music is phenomenal and the amount of different tracks is really cool. Calamari Desert is also good too. The music may be mid, but I like the aspect of the train coming during the second and third laps, and the shortcuts are just wild. Sydney Sprint is quite the lovely track there, mate. I love the music there, and the live transitions are very good to race through. Mushroom Gourd is very fun, mainly because of the bouncing mushrooms you can do tricks off of. It's really fun in order to do in my opinion. London Loop rocks, just like the music itself. It's so awesome to listen to. The turns are so wide and cool to do, giving many opportunities to do shortcuts. And visually, it's pretty nice. I love the EDM vibes Berlin Byways music gives, while also adding in strings to it. Even though there's so many cars to dodge, it doesn't feel as frustrating as Move You Highway or Shroom Ridge. It adds a good amount of challenge. I like Amsterdam Drift. It's not that spectacular and it doesn't have any challenging moments, but it's still a very comfortable track I can race on. The amount of tricks you can do in DK Summit is just awesome as Excite Bike Arena. I love it so much. The music in Waluigi Stadium sucks. Sonically, it's not good, but the track itself still slaps. It has a good amount of trick ramps and obstacles to avoid. Singapore Speedway has an amazing music track. Both versions of it is awesome to listen to. Visually, the tracks look so gorgeous, and the lap transitions are nice as well. Squeaky Clean Sprint is a squeaky clean track. The musical score in this track is very good. The track itself is like a bathroom version of Ribbon Road, but in a good way. I even like the amount of shortcuts it has. Los Angeles Laps is a very fun track with lots of good moments, like when you're flying across the baseball stadium, and just visually it's wonderful to look at. And the music is very nice and groovy. I enjoyed this track as much as I did in Mario Kart Tour. Vancouver Velocity is a fun track to race on. I love doing laps 2 and 3 when you're driving through the ice skating ring, and once again, the music slaps. I got nothing much to say about Roma Vanity, other than the music being beautiful to listen to. It's a fun track, but I'll need some more time on this one. Nothing bad or average about it though. The same can be said about Major Drive, except one good thing I will say other than the music is how nice and sharp the turns can be. Bowser Castles 3 is easily the most challenging track I've ever played in this DLC and it's fucking awesome. The amount of challenging tricks to do, the amazing sharp turns, and for a track this short in terms of length, it does its job well. With that being said, we now move on to the goaded tier. Paris Promenade just screams Paris so much. The Eiffel Tower is such a sweet aspect to see when driving on the track. I love how the third lap has you driving in reverse this time. It's such a fun spectacle. And the music track is so lovely to listen to. This track is so damn awesome. Sky Garden has a fun remix to the music track. It has two good shortcuts. And overall, I just have a lot of fun racing on that track. Merry Mountain is the perfect track for Christmas, from the Christmas train to driving on the train tracks, and it has a good amount of shortcuts as well. I even like the music too. Daisy Circuit is a fun, short track to race on. I absolutely adore the statues of Daisy and Luigi, and once again, the music slaps a lot. Rosalina's Ice World is such a magical wonderland. The ice physics in the track are much better than Snowlands. The underwater sections kind of reminds me of the Little Mermaid in a way. And visually, it looks very beautiful. I've been wanting Re Rainbow Road to make its way to the Booster Course Pass to try it out for the first time, and I'm so glad it's there. It's by far the most colorful Rainbow Road I've ever played. It's got a good amount of challenge, and the fact that it's the final track for the Booster Course Pass really ends the DLC with a bang. And that about does it for the Goated tier. You're probably asking where the rest of the DLC tracks. Glad you asked, because these five tracks definitely deserve his own tier, and it's the bias tier. These are my favorite tracks out of the entire Booster Course Pass. Waluigi Pinball is so awesome to race on, from the music to the moving pinballs to the glider section and the pinball game itself. This is just as fun as Pinball Highway from Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, which by the way, I did a review on that game. You can go check it out on the top right card. Sky High Sunday was the first original track to be made for 8 Deluxe before making its way to Tour. 
and it definitely made its way sky high to this tier. Okay, I know, I know that was bad, but I just still. From the ice cream bars to the ice cream shops, I love doing tricks off the wafers, and driving on different flavors of ice cream makes it a fantastic frozen treat to race on. Peach Gardens is a track I had so many memories with in Mario Kart DS. It's still a fun track to race on, but what makes it stand out from the DS and Tour versions is that like Paris Promenade, you'll be racing in reverse in the final lap. That is such an amazing switch up. Daisy's Cruiser is very fun. I've been wanting to race on that track ever since I saw RDC World 1's videos on Mario Kart Double Dash. What really does it for me is the music. I just love the bass melody of that music track. The race track itself is very fun to race on. I'm just happy to race on Daisy themed courses in general. Finally, we have 3DS Rainbow Road. This is by far my number one favorite track in the entirety of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. While not as colorful as Wii Rainbow Road, it still has a lot of amazing details. You'll be driving around Neptune and Jupiter in the first lap, then you'll be driving on Saturn's ring and then onto the moon, and the last lap has this colorful pipe for you to drive through. If you thought if you drive through the glider ramp, you'll have a much easier time than doing the tricks below. This track is phenomenal. Even the music is awesome to listen to. 3DS Rainbow Road is not only my favorite track overall, but it's easily the best Rainbow Road I've ever played. And I've only played six of them. And that about does it for all the DLC tracks. I know some of these placements may piss some people off, but that's how I feel about these tracks. Regardless, I'm really glad Nintendo brought more life into this game. It's still selling well and has been the top selling game on the Nintendo Switch, but it was starting to get stale, which is why I'm happy to play all the DLC tracks. And the fact that it's almost half the price of the full game is a huge steal. I mean, 48 new tracks, 8 new characters, along with over 15 new Mii suits for 25 bucks? How could you not call that a sweet deal? This has really been a fun two year experience, and if you want to check out my full playthrough, of the DLC tracks along with the other tracks, the link, well, it will be in the top right corner, the whole playlist, so you can check that out. And I'm curious as to what they'll do for Mario Kart 9, but only time will tell. Now, as for the base tracks, that'll be for his own video. But if this video gets over 50 likes, which I highly doubt, then I might rank all the base tracks for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Let me know your favorite DLC tracks in the comment section. Until then, this is Startup Protagonist signing out, as always, Goki Genyo, and have a star-tastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.